we just want to uh, start we're going to start some spoon making with some blanks we've got here from the woodlands at Penryn Castle and uh, what we're going to do is split and um, show you how to rough axe out a spoon blank and then um, we'll see how quickly it uh, how, how quickly it goes and you can see for yourself I've got a little bit of lime here these are these are uh, trimmings from the trees it's a free resource it's very practical and if you've been following my blog you'll see how we've been progressing some of the more refined spoons like these spoons spatulas and cutting boards and um, so we've, we're going to show you a little bit different method here to kind of talk you through a few things so I've picked out some blanks here some of the woods that are suitable would be birch aspen um, I've got the lime like I said this is a lime one that I started earlier but let's just talk about axe and safety first I've got some protective glasses on um, up to you where you go with your safety we've got several different axes here some of these are brand new that I've shaped and reset this is an old one that I've had for a long time an old braids axe and then this would be a, a husky this is a no, this is a ground force, sorry, getting in the wrong place here. Um, and you can see the heads are slightly different. This is one that I reshaped, and when you go on my blog, you'll be able to see how I've reshaped that one. But um, and here's one. This is probably the cheapest one of all. This is, um, this is a very cheap act. This has only cost about five pounds. It's got a fiberglass shaft, and, and actually, surprisingly the steel is excellent and I reshaped it a little bit not really much of a carving axe but I resharpened it and um, polished the the uh, edge uh, I went through different grits on using diamond plates and then I polished it with uh, a strop and got the uh, the crystal the crisp sharp edge I wanted but we'll use a couple of different ones and see what you feel First off, when you're using axes, axes are dangerous. You've got to be careful which axe positions you use. You've got to be careful about your material. Let's start out and split a piece here. And I'm going to go with my heavier axe here. This is, you don't need a heavy axe though. Here normally you get your axe started like this. If you need to change position so you get more of a center of percussion I'm just altering my position here this one will split all the way through like this so I've got my two pieces here split off this is the pith you can see I went straight for the center and then I want to go slightly on the other side of that but that will come out in the natural carving of the spoon my width is pretty good but I might take a little bit off another method that in fact I'll split this one differently let me split this one this has the start of a, a crack already in the end there in Britain we'd call it a shake in America we'd call it a check I'm going directly into it here this this hammer weighs about two pounds it's got rubber on each side you wouldn't normally want to use a hammer a steel hammer on a steel head but this works fine so this is a very practical and safe way to split your wood of course you could use wedges as well let's have a go on this lime limes are a little bit stockier you can see I've got a knot here sometimes that will cause a configuration in here that will make it a little bit harder to split but we'll try and see what we get with this one lime is wonderful to carve in a spoon yeah this looks like it's going to go a little bit harder as you can see this isn't as heavy as the axe head so I could go with the axe head here but with this being uh, non-fixed it's a little bit trickier so just check yourself as you go and see 
how this go one minute this seems like it's never going to split and then all of a sudden those fibers will separate start to split said that with such confidence then <laughs> I can hear little fractures come in, I can see the crack, I can hear it separating in there. And if it goes wide enough, I can see it's sp split down to about here now, can you see that in the camera? This one's a bit more tenacious, but once you've got these two thirds of the way through, then it'll suddenly go, I hope. And it's worth persevering. And you could take another ax or a steel wedge and go into this crack just to open it up more. Can you see how it's split down, down to that? So we're halfway and I can hear it still separating. It's almost like it wants to separate on its own, just under the pressure of the wedge. Come on, a little bit more. When you hear a full log split, sometimes you'll split a two, two foot diameter log with wedges and uh, some bars maybe. And it suddenly, especially in the woods, it just cracks and pops. <laughs> so we're down into that. And now we can pull, it's a bit hard to pull that not risk the axe dropping on your leg so axe in place combine the two together and the two will split all the way out look at this here this is the phenomenal part of wood working especially splitting the wood you get into a real relationship with the wood uh, you can see how this has a an annual ring a, it's actually a growth ring we don't really call them annual rings so much but this is where, if you remember, we had this together like this, and it was wider here, and it was wider here, and you can see this branch is coming off. So what we actually have is the main growth of the tree, and then we have a, this is the main center of the tree, and then you have this growth coming off at the side. So here is where we switch. I'm using the axe centered on the wood like this and then I'm going to go like this this reduces the risk this starts me and then I use the weight of the log and the axe to my advantage and the natural property of the wood to split to my advantage too so here I want to get to width Probably rocking a little bit too much there. This one, where would I go with this? Here, this is my wide end of the spoon. This is where the bowl is going to go at the moment. That's what I feel like. You could just weaken some of those fibers a bit like that. See how that advantaged everything. And this is the knot, you see there's a knot here. So this is my spoon end, this is my handle end. So how would I go here? I might go in here and thin this back off a little bit. The thicker the tree, the more resistance you'll get to splitting. So when you get thinner here, hopefully, we 
we can split down some of this just get rid of some of the waste the excess here I probably wouldn't normally advise you to come higher than halfway if you're a novice to this just come up maybe to halfway and then go ahead and split downwards and then split more from the other end so by flipping over here if you want this thinner go ahead and split from this end doing the combined uh, wood and axe chop like this fingers definitely not this way no thumbs gripping around it finger and thumb on the side is enough support now what do you want to do in terms of do you lay this out um, you know you'll see people that are doing bushcraft and they'll they'll just axe the whole thing out without any layout but if you're a novice then uh, you want some guidelines there's nothing wrong with putting some guidelines on your material just to get you started so I'm pretty close to my blank size I'm going to put my, my bowl in here I'm going to have my handle up here very thick there for the handle I don't need anywhere near that thickness so split down so I'm using a fairly regular uh, hewing axe, this would just be a splitting axe, we would use this for firewood, we used it for limbing, we'd use it for small axe work, uh, for tree trimming, that kind of thing, uh, it would be great for that. As a carving axe, it's a bit heavy, you've got to be very conscious that the, the carving axe is lighter weight, and it has a little different shape around here, so you can get your hand right in the top, so that's what we did with these two axes here this one is the Baco axe this is very inexpensive this will cost you about I don't know 13 15 pounds I've taken the heel off here to give me a little more access and I've kept a longer point on there this one was a cheap axe this one works well as a carving axe it's got this cutaway in here a bit like on a guitar on a cutaway neck so you can get tight in here and you can do more refined cuts with this so I'm just getting my surface here see here I'm getting near to my hand so I might go like this just to reduce the risk when I get too near my fingers my hand I want to be conscious of safety I'm standing slightly to the side of the log here so if there is a slip I'm like I'm gonna miss my lower body see here I've got my little indent here so I drop my axe in and then I use that cutting edge with the chopping combined together with the piece of wood so here I'm a little bit higher now I'm getting nearer to this hand so just light with the heel of your axe so I'm just going lightly with the heel of my axe then I go with the full face of the axe and then chop into it this way and you'll find your own techniques too this chop cut really works well now this is where I was saying if you wanted to put the um, uh, the shape on here go ahead and do it don't hesitate so I've got my shape I've left a little excess on the outside 3 eighths of an inch or so just draw around here it just gives you a guideline to trim to And you, these don't have to be uniform once you've got your rough shape marked out you can make them longer or shorter you could move your blank over can you see that in there with the lines drawn on it now remember that I'm I'm moving pretty quickly because your attention span might not be that great you may want to have this over and done with but you take your time with everything you're doing in think of safety this safety issue is very important for you here so now I want to shape around here take off this excess so I might start here like this 
We'll take off some of this excess here. Here, now remember what I said about going halfway up. So you get to here, go ahead and just chop here. Combine chop here like this. And the bevel on the axe will actually follow the grain of the wood. You can see this is following the grain. So I'm right on my line. You can see my line is still there. So here, what do I do? Do I go higher? What you do is you go directly across the grain on the neck here, like this, and then come in here. Chop into it. And then another chop here. Chop into it. Now you don't want to go too far this way because you'll split all the way down here and you'll be beyond your line so don't come this way Woo! right into here have I done that yes I have so you can see we're getting near now can you see how I'm choking up on the on the axe here and that gives me very good close-in control here See here, I'm near my upper fingers here. They're actually quite a distance away. On the camera, it might look like I'm closer than I, I am. But here, just chop, chop, chop. See, I'm using the combination. Now, it doesn't mean nothing can go wrong. It just means I'm taking this extra caution with little taps like this. So I've still got my line here. Now then, one more chop here there and that's got me right onto this line here can you see that so i'm right up to my line so break out your axe tighten up on the axe here this is really quite amazing i don't know if you can hear the helicopter we're right on the coast here so when a helicopter goes over it's usually for coastal wrecks um, rescue or practice hospital rescue because of the mountains so what do i do here i can come in here not so easy i might go in here like this and start this uh, chop cut again like this bit difficult that one you've got to be careful not too much of an angle my hand's quite a long way away, but this glancing blow can come up and catch your knuckles. You don't want that. We don't want any accidents. So you can chop here. Look at your line this side and think, well, I need to take off a little bit here. So you can go across the grain like this, if you can get it right there. Or you can come down like this. Short, not heavy blows, no heavy blows on this. Just trim down. I'm staying away from my line here. This is where the outline of my bowl is. So I can chop off this excess here. I'm getting close to it. Then this part here. Same on the other side. Now we've got the same to do here. So put some stop cuts in here like this and then split off the excess you can hit this way you can hit this way I like to go down so I'm going in with the heel of my axe again If you miss the line, you go too deep, don't give up, just change the shape of your spoon. I know it's a little hard when you first start this. Now here I'm getting near my hand again, so this is where I, whoops, I change position. You can work right up to that shoulder, keep working down. Uh, 
looking pretty good. Close now. Then you can work on your side profile once you've got this roughed out. Whew, they're in the close now. And then this side off here. So I've got my blank fairly close to the shape that I want now. So we get nearer towards knife work. So eyeball your profile, take a look at how equal how even you are. We're getting close here. The more you can get with the axe the less knife work you'll have to do because uh, the knife work is very limited as to how much it can take off and the axe will give you a little bit more. So here is the neck of the spoon. I want to take this big bulky bit out here. That's probably Prince William up there. He flies from Valley Airport. Uh, Airf Air RAF field here. So here, I'm getting close to the shape I want here again, that close in, watch your fingers now. So this is lime, you can see the lime is working pretty nicely. I'm getting some of the bulk of this out of here. Choke up on your axe. Okay, I think I'm close enough on that. I'm still thick here as you can see, but now I can come in here, start splitting off quite a, a large section here. So I've got my, I've got the profile that I want. You may want a different profile. Then this side, I want to take off here and work in down so I get a little curve in my spoon. Bit of a knot there, a little pin knot. So I've got something of the shape I want. I'm just following the grain, that's going to give me the strength I want in this spoon. So I'm following this grain, any bends in the grain that will help me. So here on the corners, choke up on your axe again. And start shaping, take off the excess of the hoops, that was a little bit much. This is the nice thing about working with wood is you learn, especially this way, this is very important for anybody that hasn't split wood and hasn't worked in the woods and is to know about the grain of the wood. 
So here, this is coming off here. And I'm close enough now with this, most of what's left is going to be knife work. So we'll do that in a minute. I want to take out this inside, some of the weight out of here. So I usually just go in the bowl here like this. Just split some of the fibers, the continuous grain, so that I, now I've gone across. Can you see why I have this heel in here? It gives me a, a hollow bowl shape in here. So when I chop here, I can come in with the point of my axe to continue that here. So that's just weaken some of the fibers and give me something to split to. Then I can go in with the heel here for the far side like this. Then I go in this side with the point of my axe. It just makes it convenient really. And you could shape your axe very differently than I've got. So there you can see I've got half of my bowl in there. I think you can see it. And now I have to come from the top down. This is where it gets a little tricky because your fingers are very close together. But you can come in this way. Again, just get your axe started near to where you want it. Then you can lift up and you can chop down from here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest you exchange hands. Just go in here like this. Can you see that? This is just to take the bulk of the waste out. See my fingers, I, my fingers are behind and above the cutting edge. So I've got some of the waste out of the inside of the bowl. Would I go a little bit further? I might do. Just get yourself started, a start point there. Can you see that on the camera? So it's just giving me a little start point, just using the point of the axe, and I could do just the same on this side here. Just small kind of stabbing cuts, really. Yeah, jabbing. And then in here, right into the pocket that you started, and then this side, fingers behind the cutting edge and above the cutting edge, not in front of it. So now I've got my bowl carved, rough carved, very rough carving. This is very rough carving, but now I've got to go with the knife. I feel happy about the shape I've got. I've got the profile, I've got the thicker back. So this is where we introduce you to some knife work. And here I've got three different knives. I've got a straight knife here, and this I'll use for the convex surfaces. So I'd use this on my uh, curved surface on here. And these two, one is shallow and one is, this is a shallower bowl or hook knife here. So I'm going to go across here. So you can see, now these are going to be super sharp. Now I'm cutting towards my thumb and um, I'm going to be careful here. But I, gotta, I can go in both directions with this one. This one's a single sided knife. I like this one. I can go across the grain with this, like this. But what I'm going to suggest you do, especially if you're starting out, is put a thumb guard on. Now if you don't have a thumb guard, you can make one very quickly. I'm just using, this has got duct tape on this one, you can see. But all I did for this is I took a piece of leather, just a square strip of leather, and I made it wide enough for my thumb, like this, so you just take this piece of any piece of leather, make sure it's got a little bit of guts to it here. And just fold this round your thumb, tuck it in like this, and then take some duct tape here. This is just a quick, easy way to get going. I'm not, you may want to get a permanent guard at some point. But just take some duct tape, Pull this over. This is the side. I've got a little bit wider at this side, so I'd bring this in here and then tear off a piece of duct tape. And tape the two halves together like this. Very quick, easy thumb guard. And then you can wrap, you know, two or three wraps around and you can actually use the tape itself to tape it to your thumb. 
which is what I'm going to do here. So just to tape it to my thumb, stop it from slipping off. And I've got a thumb guard that will work just fine. So that means any slippage is going to hit that guard first. So here we go. Now then, typically we woodworkers, especially in my field, we always try and work with the grain. But for bowl carving of different types, you come across the grain like this. Can you see that? Right into the bowl. So you're kind of looking for shape now. This is going to leave some undulation and some uh, texture in the surface, which is nice. I like the, the thought of the texture. And you're going to carve that bowl to shape. And probably switch between. Now we're going to show you some gouge methods as well. So here... This has got a shallower sweep on it, so this actually works well to even out some of the um, steeper cuts with the other knife. So that's how we get the bowl deeper, more refined. We can work uh, across the grain like this. Now this is a two-sided knife, so you've got to be a little bit careful on this edge and this edge. This the reason we have a two-sided is because we may want to push without turning around so now I'm coming down here because these are the end grain fibers so I'm going to come down here into this one and then I work across this one back into it like this so I'm getting my shape now remember this is green wood as well so with it being green I'm not sure that I always take mine down to the full depth and full finish because I want this to dry out and I don't want to, get to spend too much time on it because there is a possibility sometimes that the bowl will crack because of its size. Don't leave it too thick. If it's too thick, it will crack. Now we get to the size, but that's how I would carve the inside of the bowl. Now carving the outside is just a question of peeling potatoes. Who can peel potatoes? Can you peel potatoes? I think you can. Well, this is really not a whole lot different than peeling potatoes, as you can see. So get your shape and start just, just carving away at the high spots. Anything that doesn't look like a wooden spoon, just shape it off. Shave it off. And eventually you'll end up with a lifetime spoon. That's the neat thing about carving spoons, is they are lifetime. The worst thing that can happen in the neck here, we're going to go a little differently here. So I've got my thumb there, just steadying everything. So I'm taking off these high spots here, can you see? Taking off the axe marks, so I'm just peeling them away. Down here. Push your thumb here, go behind it like this. Go into the neck here, clean up this bulby area here, get rid of that high spot. And you could actually use, you can use this one too, you can pull this in here if you want to, just to get a cove inside that neck if you want to. I think the flat uh, straight knife works really well though. So I can push my thumb behind here. See I've got this, so I put this steady on the, on the log like this, and just work into that, work off the high spots and keep working down till you get the shape that you want and I'll finish that one up and I'll let you see it when I've finished <laughs> 